is that the worst is behind us. It bottomed in October when I wrote a big Twitter article and a big global macro investor piece. Hello, everyone. Today, our guest is world famous former hedge fund manager, founder of Real Vision Finance and crypto investor Raul Pal, who in this video counters difficult questions of recession, inflation, the Fed's approach, and predicts what the crypto, Bitcoin, bond, and stock market's about to do. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. The U.S. economy has surprised investors, market watchers, and even the Federal Reserve over the past few months as inflation has decreased, while the job market has remained strong after several interest rate increases. And while several prominent economists are now openly hopeful that the economy can manage a soft landing, not everyone is so sure that we aren't headed for a downturn. The former chief economist and strategist for Merrill Lynch, David Rosenberg, thinks that the markets are in for more pain this year. The recession's just starting, Rosenberg said Tuesday morning in an interview with MarketWatch. The market bottoms typically in the sixth or seventh inning of the recession, deep into the Fed easing cycle. That means that given the Fed is still increasing rates, not easing them, Rosenberg sees the financial markets facing a prolonged period of uncertainty. He added that the S&P 500 could drop as much as 30% from where it is now before the Fed starts finally pausing or cutting interest rates. But on the bright side, he expects the Fed to cut rates in coming months. At depth, my thinking. My thinking is that we are hurtling off the edge of the cliff into a recession. That recession we've been forecasting, Julian Bittle and myself at Global Macro Investor, from um, about this time last year, actually, we saw it in the forward-looking data, and the current data is catching up. So we're now, I use the business, um, the ISM as probably my best guide to the business cycle, and that's kind of at this 48 or so level, 47 point whatever level, and really just below 47 is a 100% chance of recession. Now, all the forward-looking indicators, like new orders, are completely off a cliff. Uh, employment, prices paid, you name it, every single indicator. We have a database of 1,500 indicators. Um, a global macro investor, and it's all falling off a cliff. So this is the point where you get to on Twitter, where everyone goes, oh, my God, there's a recession. Surely stocks are going to go down. No shit, Sherlock. They've already gone down. The Nasdaq went down 37.7%, I think, uh, from the high. But what's interesting is that the forward-looking indicators are starting to suggest that we will hit the bottom um, of the recessionary wave in about April. So we're likely to get, I think, two, maybe three quarters of negative GDP. But I think it's more akin to the 1990 style recession, which was the stock market fell 20 percent, the economy fell 2 percent, ISM went down to 40 or so. It all recovered. There was some overhang. The economy was slow for a while and then eventually recovered. A normal garden recession. That's what I think we're in the middle of. I think people are confusing prices, which is the unwind of the um, prices as in markets, the unwind of everything that happened in the in 2021 got unwound in 2022. And I saw Dario Perkins on Twitter calling it the A-shaped uh, economy. So as opposed to a V-shape, it was an A-shape. So it went up, came back down, and it's reverted back to trend. So almost all of the charts have reverted back to trend. I think oil still got a bit of a way to go. Uh, Nat gas got there. Uh, most of the commodities have got there. Most of these things are down 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 percent now, uh, taking the inflation fears out. But this this recessionary thing is what's in everybody's head. And the narrative in the market is, well, just wait for the earnings leg. Do you not remember 2001? Do you not remember the second leg in 2008? Those were very different styles of recession to that, in my view. Of course, I could be wrong. My guess is when I look at the rate of change of the S&P or the NASDAQ, they've all entirely priced in a recession. So the NASDAQ priced in an ISM of about 37, um, which is where my forward-looking indicator, my Global Macro Investor Financial Conditions Index, has been pricing the bottom of the ISM trough. And it's all coming around the same date. So what's happened is the markets have been forward-looking. They discounted the recession fast. And they're now starting to discount the pickup on the other side. And that's coinciding with 
the rate of change of Fed increases coming down. The ECB are the same, the Bank of England are the same. Everybody's slowing down their rate increases and are going to pause mode. Whether we get one more hike or not, I doubt it actually, but there's a chance we get one more pause. The bond market's starting to realize that that's probably the case as well. Also, global liquidity, M2 cycle, stuff like that, that's been picking up. But my view is that overall is that the worst is behind us. It bottomed in October when I wrote a big Twitter article and a big global macro investor piece calling it the bear market killer, which is October. And bang on schedule, the whole bear market stopped in October. I had lots of technical signals like DMARC counts telling me monthly and weekly and daily that this was probably the low. I'd already had that in crypto back in June for ETH and then again in Bitcoin and others uh, into October. So we've got this perfect set of signals across everything. The liquidity cycle picking up maximum bearish sentiment, the worst I've ever seen. And I I think in Global Macro Investor, we put together 40 of these sentiment indicators of stuff going back to the 60s. And it was the worst um, sentiment the markets have ever seen. And then we had the option buying and all of that, you know, the put option buying, all of that stuff. So I'm now bullish risk. And I've been flagging this for a while. And I flagged it when I started buying crypto in June. And I flagged it when I re-added it. And I've been talking about, I think the inflationary pressure is coming. I think inflation goes negative next year. Um, actually, this year, sorry. I think the rate of decline of commodities is much sharper than anybody realizes. I think wages are rolling over. Um, I also think rents are rolling over. So the whole lot is coming down. And that will go all the way through till 2024. Easing. Um, negative real rates, that kind of stuff. And that's the next phase that I think we come into in the latter parts of 2023. And I think we'll see significant easing uh, for a whole host of reasons in 2023, back end 2024, uh, and back to quantitative easing that I think we'll get by in 2024, maybe even 2023. We'll, we'll wait and see. So that's basically the macro setup for me. I'm very bullish risk, bullish crypto, bullish technology, bullish carbon credits, bullish bonds. Um, Bullish gold don't really have any of it. Um, starting to wait for things like copper uh, because we've got some secular backdrops. I like secular trends. I don't tend to, te uh, tend to trade the cyclical stuff anymore. I find it a bit boring. And I don't, I don't think it's very easy to make money consistently over time. I like a secular trend. And when, for example, when you look at the technology stock stocks, like we can take the NASDAQ, uh, if we take the NASDAQ on a log chart, We've come back to the bottom of the log trend channel um, and we've had all of the bottom indicators and signals. And usually if you can buy uh, the cyclical sell off when it hits the secular trend, that is the sweet spot. We're in that sweet spot now. We're in the sweet spot on crypto uh, technology. We will get there probably in copper as well um, and a few other markets where it starts to get very, very interesting for very high future expected returns. Uh, we saw something not dissimilar in carbon as well. So that's where we are. Cyclical pressures down to the secular trend. I love my secular trends. Uh, my big secular trends are India, technology, exponent exponential age technology. That's a whole host of things from robotics to AI to EV to distributed data to um, metaverse. Uh, I'm not really investing in the metaverse yet. Um, Really, I had a go at tokens, I had Decentraland and other stuff. But they've, I know they've done pretty decently. Um, we, for Real Vision, have been exploring and used Vatum, which I really like, which most people aren't aware of. And we've also obviously used on Cyber and 6529's um, OM. So those are the ones I'm, I'm really looking at right now. Uh, and that's really from a, from a Real Vision perspective, as opposed to the broader perspective. You know, I'm not really in that kind of gaming world, so I won't see this coming up. Obviously, uh, Other Side by... Um, Yuga Labs is interesting as well. Let's see what they do. I'm sure they'll do something pretty good because they, they're pretty good at that. I like this question. Do you believe there's a chance that the debt bubble would eventually burst? Obviously, we've all thought a lot about this topic. And I've been writing a lot in Global Macro Investor about this. And I think the answer is it cannot burst. A, they can't allow it to because it's too catastrophic. But B, Quantitative easing means that they'll never burst. So the government can just endlessly finance itself, print more money, and they can endlessly print more money to make sure that the value of assets, the collateral of the system goes up and therefore nobody's insolvent. We saw that in 20, uh, uh, 2020. 
And I think that was the big signal for me is they can't allow the insolvency. Remember I had that insolvency phase idea? Well, that never happened. And what ha what stopped is the Fed came in and said, uh, no, sorry, your collateral's not gonna go to zero. And so don't forget we've got this massive pension system and the liabilities there are a huge problem as well. So they just can't allow it to happen. So I do not think the debt system bursts. I think it dies in different ways. I actually think it dies from, um, over time, I think they have to get GDP growth above um, debt growth. Um, and that's gonna take time. Um, I think it's gonna take a change in the demographic, i.e. the dying off of the baby boomer population. Um, and then GDP growth driven by, by technology and productivity growth has to go up. So it's actually a long-term game, and I think they'll hang it out as, for as long as possible, much like Japan has been doing and Europe's been doing. I think it's a long-term game, um, and what we get is the debasement of assets to counteract it, a uh, debasement of currency, which leads to higher asset prices and everybody getting more and more angry because the markets never go down. So I actually think that that is how the world works now. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Raul Pal. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.